Do you know one of the biggest reasons why people reject church? It's because churches and the people inside them disagree with each other all the time on all kinds of stuff. And if churches and the people inside them can't get along, why would anyone else want to join one? Hi, I'm Kyle, by the way. I'm a pastor here at Crossroads. It's my job to help you explore who God is and discover the life of adventure that I believe God has for you. Did you know there are over 45 thousand denominations of churches in the world. That's crazy. And see, the thing is, it wasn't always this way. Turns out there used to just be one. So what happened? Well, the same thing that can happen to relationships and friendships and families and break them apart. That thing is called disagreement. Let's run an experiment. If I were to say to you, Simone Biles, is the opposite of a quitter, and in fact is a winner in the very definition of what it means to be an American, and you were to disagree with that, I would simply say, well, I think you're wrong. Simple as that. That's called a disagreement. And here's the thing, disagreement is okay. Me and our senior pastor, Brian Tome, sat down to have a conversation about just that, about what it means when churches and the people in them disagree now, for those of you who've joined us before, this episode will feel a little bit different than normal. We do have a weekly message. It's coming just a little bit later than usual. Brian's gonna give a special message for an entire church to hear all about God's love. You'll be able to find that right here on Sunday evening. For now, I want you to hear this interview I did with Brian about how at Crossroads, we aim to transcend the norm of disagreement. Okay, so when I first came to Crossroads, so many things about Crossroads were different than any other church I'd ever seen. Like, um, Crossroads seemed to think that the world's problems were their problems to solve. If people are hungry, that's the church's job. If people are sad, that's the church's job. One of the most mind-blowing, though, was I, I remember you saying in a message, we major on the majors, we minor on the minors, you don't have to agree with everything to belong here. And I had never heard that before. So I'm curious, I genuinely don't know this answer. Where did that idea come come from? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, well, a lot of what Crossroads is came from reaction to my previous church experience, uh. reacting against it, wanting to improve upon it. And I just saw a church that I went to, everything was, this is what you have to believe, everything. This is how baptism works. This is, this is whether or not you can lose your salvation or not. This is how you have to vote. This is what you have to believe about this. I mean, everything how was just- How is the earth and uh, all the stuff, yeah. Right, and you know, we don't, see, we don't see Jesus going up to people and saying, come unto me, all who will believe this and this, huh. and this and this and this and this and this, you know, we don't see that. Come to me, all who are burdened and weary, and I will mm. give you rest, right? Mm. Um, Romans 10, 9, belief is important. You, shall be, you should believe that Christ is raised from the dead and confess him with your, with your mouth that he is Lord. Okay, so belief is important. But belief in a very small number of things is necessary to come into relationship with Christ. And the more that we layer on top of that, the more we actually repel people from Christ and, and the more that we believe my walk with Christ is all about just having the right beliefs. It's not. Mm. It, it seems, I, I think this is accurate. It, if the church has been that, like you gotta do this and this and this and this and this to belong to this church, and if this one thing changes, well then we, we split off and make a whole other church over here. It feels like culture has mirrored that bad part of church's history more and more where people are, they can't understand <laughs> You really, you don't have to believe all the stuff to be right. part of us. What do you think the fix is for that? Well, this is very clearly, this is very clearly our culture. Uh, it used to maybe be a uniquely Christian thing that you are right, that is the dividing of denominations. We can't live with differences with one another, so let's just keep dividing and right. all that stuff. But culture has taken it, modern American culture has taken it to a much more harmful extreme. I mean, you, you can't think something that your preferred outlet gives without being a hater. You can't, you can't have any different opinion without being uneducated or a bigot or whatever. It's, it's really the, huh, the worst of the old school church religion with all grace stripped out of it, all Jesus stripped out of it. And that's why we're not able, part of why we're not able to live in harmony with one another. So you, I know, 
I know. You take a lot of grief. No. Yeah. Me? I don't know. Have you ever read your email? Come on. I don't know if you have. Come on. Really? Sometimes they get forwarded to me to answer, so I read some of them. You, 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 you take son. a lot of grief, and it'd be easier if you just went like, you know what? Fine. We're just going to, here's the boxes you got to check. Here's the 25 things you have to believe you part of Crossroads. You save yourself a lot of grief. Why not just do that? If there's a, there's an old phrase, you know, got to be on the right or on the left. If you're in the middle, you're going to get run over. And I feel, I feel that a lot of ways right now. Mm. I know with our current controversy that are happening, if I were to clearly say, hey, any sexual orientation or desire you have, anything you want to do with your body is good with God. Just, you know, if you feel good about it, no one else is getting hurt, then go ahead. Or I could also go, hey, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 appears to say, if you have any of these compulsions, you're automatically going to hell. We need to expel everybody from our midst who isn't this way. We need to... Those two things are very simple. There's a very clear um, support choir yeah. for either one of those things. And both of those things are defensible with sound bites. But when you're somewhere in the middle, you understand that oftentimes truth isn't as simplistic as, as either side makes it. And I'm not committed to being in the middle. I'm not, I'm not in the middle, or we're not in the middle on a lot, a lot of things. Not at all. Very extreme on things, but never consistently extreme left and never consistently extreme right. I think what you have to do is you have to be committed to being on the side of truth and love. What does that mean? Well, being on the side of truth means truth is an objective standard that can't be argued with. You know, this, this stuff that we talk about, well, that's my truth. I prefer we said that's my opinion or right. that's my conviction. That's not my truth. There's only one truth, that which is. If I take your thing here, my truth is this is going to stand up here. No, truth is... It. That's truth. Good it's thing. Oh, good thing I made this uh, oak with my own hands. Good thing I did that. You know, that's um, uh, so. Truth is, truth is unbending. Truth is not um, really up for debate. Now we don't always understand exactly what the truth is on things, but um, when you come to see that you're going to believe something that might not be understood by the mass on the right or understood by the mass on the left but you believe that's what God says, you just go there, period. And then the love aspect is you, you have to be really cautious of how you talk about that. And that's the mistake we made a couple weeks ago. It wasn't the mistake talking about um, children taking puberty blockers, that wasn't a mistake. It wasn't a mistake raising a white flag and saying, hey, can we talk about what's happening here in many of our clinics, that that wasn't a mistake. What was a was a mistake is holistically, over the service, there wasn't an attitude of, and demeanor of love that I exhibited. Mm. Mm. That was that was the problem. So, and and that was that was the apology as well as well as other things. But when you're going to try to operate by there is an objectable standard of truth, and Love is kind of a big deal in the Bible. It seems like it. It's a yeah. kind of a big deal. Seems in the, like it. I mean, the, the Bible does say it's the only ancient religious book that says, the first one that says God is love. The Quran doesn't say that. Other ancient religious texts say that. The Bible says God is love. And whenever we hear God is love, whether it's Oprah or somebody else saying that, or, or a modern day religion, they've all hijacked from the Bible. Yeah. The Bible says like, what, what, he's, he's love. Thought he was just this harsh entity who said what it was. Well, he does say what it is, and he can appear harsh sometimes, and he does have standards, but he is he's love. Mm. And that message comes again and again and again in the Bible. So being in that place where you believe in objective truth that you don't invent on your own, and that there's a God who loves you and loves me, even if you're happening to be wrong, that's that that should be a Christian characteristic. That's right. Okay, so last question. <sighs> What, what is it for, for, for me, for us, to be part of this church? What is the attitude you want us to bring to the collective family dinner table? You're not asking us to agree on everything. What is it you're asking us to do? I'm asking you to 
put on a mindset you're not going to get anywhere else in culture. Uh, nowhere else in culture are you, do you have to sit in a room with people who look different than you and act different than you and think different than you. If you're in college, everyone in there pretty much looks the same or at least they're the same age, right? If you're in a boardroom, everyone pretty much has the same economic thing or whatever. If you're in a neighborhood, you're probably in a neighborhood of whatever town you're in because, and people probably there vote the same way, wherever mm -hmm. it is. Um, we can do that in the rest of the culture. When you come into Crossroads and including coming into where we are online, not just in a building, but into an online presence, you're gonna be filled with people who are very, very different than you. And you're gonna to have to learn to, and think different than you, you're, you're going to have to learn to gird your mind, hmm. or the Bible also says gird your loins, and just find something different inside of you that the rest of the culture isn't gonna demand. We demand that you actually open up your mind. We demand that you actually listen to beliefs that are different than yours. We actually demand that you learn to be in harmony in a community where there's things that if you were the senior pastor, you were on the board of spiritual directors, it wouldn't happen that way because you would change it. Hey, guess what? All of us have things about Crossroads we would change, including me. <laughs> <laughs> including you. Including me. No, you would change yes, that. Absolutely, including me. No question I would. Huh. No, I, I've got a big voice. I've got a loud voice. I've got more probably singular authority than anybody. Yeah, there's stuff that happens at Crossroads all the time that I... You wouldn't change anything that I'm doing though, right? I would change you. <laughs> no. You would just be deleted. You, you would be canceled. That's a stop. You'd be just deleted and canceled. Um, stop. But we have to, the Bible says we have to bear with one another. Yeah. When you're in a, a church, you have to actually bear with one another. That means bear with ideas that you think are stupid. Mm. And they may be stupid. Mm. They actually may be. Mm. But the biblical mandate is to bear with one another in that weakness. And guess what? You have to have the, the right level of humility to recognize that you believe some really stupid things too that you're gonna be ashamed of when you get to heaven. And we're all too fallen and too into ourselves right now to understand all those things to the fullest. That's right. We don't get there because we believe the right set of checklists or it's, we get there because of, of grace. <laughs> if it was belief, then demons would get there. Yeah. The book of James mm. says that even demons know the truth and shudder. Mm. So it's not our knowledge, it's not our beliefs or else demons would be in heaven. It's, it's our knowledge that couples with love, which is a sacrificing of ourselves that then leads us to bless and serve others. That's what the demonic realm doesn't do. Mm. Good stuff. That's, it's, it's perfect. I know you're talking this weekend about God's love. We're excited for that. We're gonna give everybody a link to it, so watch out for that. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hey. Appreciate it, right there. Uh, thank you, You're pl my pleasure. <laughs> Did you hear that? We don't all believe the same things, and that's okay. You know, the critical thing in exploring who God is is to ask questions and to follow where He's calling you. Like Brian said, part of Crossroads' core DNA is a belief that we're a critical part of changing the world and making it better. The past 25 years, people from this church have stepped into places that no one else would step into, tackled problems that no one else is willing to tackle, and the impact has been amazing. We've served our neighbors, loved our cities, we fought sex slavery on the other side of the world, we come against epidemics and pandemics and all kinds of things, and the impact we've seen is incredible. Here's why I talk about that. You are invited to join it. In fact, I'm gonna invite you right now to submit any project or idea that you have that you think would change the world and make it look more like the kingdom of God. What we're gonna do is pick 10 of them to financially support before the end of this year. And we'll be highlighting some of those right here on the weekend message. Now, if you have an idea or a project, you can submit it at crossroads.net slash let's go. Now, we're about to hear from the first member in our community who had a project selected as part of this initiative. Her name is Kiai and she lives in San Francisco. She's actually been called to start a nonprofit to help people in San Francisco build affordable housing in one of the most expensive cities in the entire US. Let's hear her story. I think I just, I just saw people who were homeless and I had compassion. My name is Kiai Kim and I'm the founder of Care Association. Care Association is a San Francisco-based nonprofit 
and we're working on building affordable housing by putting land into community land trusts and teaching people how to build their own houses. I was working in tech and finding that it was not fulfilling for me and I decided to quit and start a nonprofit. Um, and then I decided that I would talk to people and see what they thought, kind of get a survey of what people thought about building their own houses. And this one guy, he jumped up and he was like, I want to build a house. I, yes, sign me up. I will, I will go t today. And I was like, okay, that's enough. <laughs> if we can find just like two people like that out on the street, we can make this project happen. And I heard, not audibly, but the words came, do nothing. Do nothing. How do you, want, how do you build a house? How do you build houses and do nothing? Um, and I tried. I was like, I'm going to listen to do nothing and I'm going to literally do nothing. And then that week was when I got an email from this, uh, from a developer, a small scale developer who signed up as a volunteer and, and said, I'm going to, I'm going to help you build houses. <laughs> I was like, okay, God, <laughs> I guess I'm in it now. It's one of those things that it was like, God like put it on a platter for me to, to take. Um, and I think one of the worries with, with starting a project like this, or any project really, is knowing how it's gonna be done. Uh, and you know, I just, I trust God. I, I, every time I've had an obstacle, I would just pray and ask and something would happen and it would become possible. With God, with God, anything is possible. The world is hurting right now and there are not enough people solving problems. And I think that's where God is calling us to step up and do something about it. The harvest is plenty and the workers are few. Stories of impact like Kiai's are a big part of why we exist. And if you've got ideas to make the world better, we want to know. Go to crossroads.net slash let's go. Now, before we end, I want to share a way for you, at least the guys watching, to meet other guys that are part of Crossroads and have a powerful, life-changing experience in person. It's called Man Camp. And I'm not kidding when I say it'll change your life. It, it really will. It's been a movement that's been growing for years. There have already been guys from 30 states sign up for this who are making the trip. And I want to encourage you to do the exact same. Here's what you can expect. Thanks for watching. To make sure you don't miss any of our upcoming videos, subscribe right here. And if you wanna know more about the life that God made you for, we actually have a playlist for you right here. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon.